This is going to be your starter kit, by the way. Microphone, tripod, and you're good to go. So um, let me start by asking the simple question. Who here is actually utilizing social media? Okay, so let me ask a more important question. Who here is utilizing social media effectively? <laughs> so it was funny because um, TikTok, for example, because that's one of the ones that gets brought up frequently, just had a forum for creators. And the interesting thing is that almost all the speakers they brought in had a following of about eight to 12,000 people on TikTok. Right? Because most of us look at these big social media creators and you see, oh my God, they have, you know, a million followers. Or the reality is, in order for any of these mediums to be effective for you, you don't need a million followers. Right? Who here has an email list? How many people are on your email list? How many? Give me a number. Okay. Okay. So we're talking about numbers between two and 4,000, and that's a lot, right? Like we built our TikTok in 90 days to 26,000 people in 90 days. We're currently doing another channel for both on, um, so we're doing YouTube shorts and all that stuff for a podcast we have. So we're call it 45 days in, and we just hit 1200 followers on TikTok. We hit 102 subscribers on YouTube. Um, does it take time? Yes. Right. But all of these mediums are fantastic because they reward you for consistency, right? Your content can be absolutely horrible. <laughs> I I'm not kidding. Right. Like you can get anywhere from 70 to 150 views per TikTok and your channel will still grow, right? Like the, and the more of it you do, the better you get, the better your channel gets, the better all of it gets. So when we start with people, we tell them, do 90, do 90 videos in the first 30 days. Right? And people go, oh, that's, that's a lot. And I'm like, no, take every networking event you went to over the last year and give us our 30 second from what now, from what you did at those networking events, right? You can say the same thing over and over again in a slightly different way, right? Because people go, oh, but won't people get tired of hearing it? There's a billion users on TikTok. You think you're the same person's going to see your video twice, <laughs> right? So that's the thing people often forget. Same thing with YouTube. Yes, it's going to be shown more to the same audience, so you have to be a little bit more picky, but you don't need nearly the volume of videos on a channel like YouTube like you do on a channel like TikTok. Same thing. Instagram actually punishes you the more you put up because we thought it was going to be the other way around. So we test everything, right? So we started dumping stuff on Instagram. We started putting, there were days where we were putting three or four things up a day and both our engagement and visibility just tanked, right? So there is such a thing for certain platforms to overshare, but all of these platforms are changing. Instagram is changing, Facebook is changing, LinkedIn is changing because they all looked in TikTok and went, how, how do these guys have like an hour and 15 minute user time on a daily basis? And we have like 18 minutes. Right, because I think that was the last number for Instagram that was actually published, that the average user spends 18 minutes on Instagram. And TikTok is like an hour and 10, hour and 15, whatever it is. So one of the key things was the difference between Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and TikTok is that TikTok is an interest-based platform. They don't care who you're connected to. They don't care who your friends are. They care about showing you more of the stuff you want to see and more of the stuff you engage with. Well, guess what the other three are now doing, right? Because they went, oh, this is where the engagement is. This is how we get users to stay on the platform. Rather than showing them pictures of cousins and whatever else, you know, puppy photos from friends and family, um, if we actually show them stuff they're interested in, they'll stay. 
right? So they had to respond to what was going on just because the data didn't lie. Nobody came close to where TikTok was. So that's why you'll see on LinkedIn, you'll see it on, on Facebook, you'll see it on Instagram. Video is going to start being heavily prioritized. There's a resistance on Instagram because the users aren't quite ready for it because they want it to be the picture app. But the reality is when it comes down to dollars and cents, they're going to put money into getting the highest retention rate, right? Because none of these platforms are doing it because they're nice, right? They're all doing it because they, they're in it to make money. So just because Instagram backtracked a little bit, like they had gone heavily prioritizing reels, they backed a little bit off of that for now, just because they didn't want to lose too many of their current users, but they are going to start slowly implementing it rather than, you know, throwing the users in the deep end like they did. So who here is actually utilizing video content right now? So about half. Okay. Are you utilizing long format, short format, all of the above? Okay. Short. Okay. So one of the things that's interesting is that short format is right now the dominant player, right? For this type of engagement. But a lot of people still underestimate YouTube, right? There is no larger video platform on the planet than YouTube. So you should be doing long format video as well as short format if you're not doing it. And the beauty of it is if you make long format content, you can cut that up into short format content. And a lot of times it's easier creating a five minute video or a seven minute video. And out of that, you might get another five or six short format clips or whatever it is, but you now have content across multiple platforms. And the other thing, um, people underutilize the um, automatic transcription services that are out there. So there's software like Descript, where you literally plump in your video and it will transcribe the entire video for you in less than a minute. You now have a blog, right? You now have written content. Now someone can go through and kind of rough edit it, but now you have written content for your website that talks about ideally something that, you know, should relate to what you do. And anybody that's been in any type of search engine optimization will still tell you what you need to put content on your website, right? Your website needs to stay active. And then the beauty of it is now you can take your video and your copy and you can put the video and the copy together on the website, right? So you're getting more use out of the stuff you're already doing because people have a tendency of looking at it going, okay, I'm just going to create TikTok videos. Why? If you could create one piece of content and you can utilize it five times, why wouldn't you? Linda? Let's talk about the past, past, past. Yes, we will get to that. Um, the other thing that I want to mention is a lot of times people focus on, okay, I want my social media to do this, right? Like you, you get into it with a purpose and whether that's fundraising, whether that's finding volunteers, um, don't get too stuck on being just a single thing. Do a variety of things. So I'll give you an example. We posted a video about our company culture. And in a time where everybody is struggling to find employees, I got 70 applications in like 35 days. Like people literally lined up. I was getting blind emails with resumes and all kinds of stuff. People literally asking, can I come work for you? All right? So not every video that you do has to be about the same thing or the same angle. It doesn't have to be just about the service you do or the service you offer or that you need money. It can also be about basic things that people relate to. You know, what's, what's your office like? What's the interaction of employees, right? What, what, 
what makes you, you? Because it's not just your mission and vision and getting people out there and saying, hey, come support us, right? People want to get to know you. And that is especially true on TikTok. So I'll give you guys an example of, because um, it's always that question of, well, do I need to go viral? First of all, no, you don't. Um, and nothing in this world will prepare you for the shit storm that comes with going viral. <laughs> okay. Um, I had a video hit up 1.4 million views in two days. And literally I thought my phone was going to blow up. Right. And when you are doing this, you want to build a community. So you want to reply to people. You want to communicate with them, right? Because you're trying to build a two-way relationship. Well, when you get 4,000 comments in two days, um, apps like TikTok will actually stop you from commenting because they think you're spamming, right? So that's when I learned, oh, you have to be careful about what comments you answer, right? Because if you answer everybody and say, oh, thank you, whatever, um, you won't be able to answer the ones that actually matter. So I have a rule that I only answer comments that add value to the conversation. So that's how we boiled it down to making sure that um, we don't run out of the ability to comment on TikTok, for example. And then you can also do video replies, which are a fantastic tool. Because now it's become a two-way interaction. Right now, someone's asking a question, you're answering it. Someone's making a comment, you're giving feedback. And not only is that awesome because it helps build that two-way relationship, but now someone sees the second video that didn't see the first one and they go back and look at, okay, what was the comment on on the first video? So those are generally fantastic to, to utilize. So... The next thing is your audience, which is where hashtags come in, for example. So pretty much all of them have come out and said, you know, hashtags don't matter. Hashtags won't prioritize your video on any level. What the hashtags do is they will categorize you, right? Which can also be very important because we test this all the time because that's what I do. I test stuff before I tell people about it. So we will run videos with no hashtags and see how they perform and what the, what the response rate is on them, right? Are we getting comments on those? Are we getting shares? Are we getting saves? And inevitably we find that if we do not hashtag videos properly to the audience we're going after, our video engagement actually goes down. The views may not, but the engagement goes down. And at the end of the day, views don't pay the bills, engagement does. Right? It doesn't matter if your video has a million views, if there is no interaction due to that video, you basically just ran a commercial for no reason. Right? Because the things you want to look at are share, saves, and comments. The comment section is going to be your most valuable section on any platform because comments trigger engagement. Right. Shares are also fantastic because it means you said something that someone else found valuable enough to share with someone. But the number of views almost becomes irrelevant, whether it has a uh, hundred thousand views or 10,000 views, I would rather have a video with 10,000 views and 300 comments than a video with a million views and three comments. And um, it's funny because you cannot plan a video going viral. Like you can, you can put your all into it and be like, this is it. And it does nothing. And then the one you recorded in your car because you just thought of it, that's the one that'll get 50,000. You're like, how, do I, how did that happen? Right? Um, and I'll give you an example. We, so we do a podcast. Uh, called Crap No One Tells You. <laughs> and we bring in people from all kinds of professions. Um, Linda actually came on. Pam has been on. Um, we've had doctors on. We had a nurse on yesterday. Um, 
We've had public adjusters, like we go across the board. We don't care what industry you're in. If there is something in your industry that has crap, no one tells you, we want you to come on the podcast, right? So it was funny because um, we did one with a attorney that specializes in trademark and copyrights. And so we take that podcast and we cut little clips out of that and we drop them on TikTok. We drop some of them on YouTube short. So we, we cross utilize it to promote it. And his videos were performing really well. They were getting 50 to 60,000 views on TikTok, for example. And we're like, oh, it's because of what he does. It's really, you know, people are interested in copyrights and because there are so many business owners. And then we had, um, who was the next one? The public adjuster. Well, he beat the lawyer by like a long shot in number of views, comments, likes, all that stuff. And then there was one guy that came and literally in one video had more views on one video than all of our other videos combined. And that was the funeral director, right? The guy where we were like, oh, you know, it's not that interesting really, right? No, no, no. His first, one of his first videos that went up got like 280,000 views. Like it, it was crazy. And it's not like the video was anything special. One of them he's talking about, um, someone calls you at 2 a.m., you've got to go pick, pick the person up, right? And he's like, and it doesn't matter whether it's raining or snowing or... Um, and then in the, in the other one, um, what was he talking about in the other one? It was something equally, like, I didn't really find it all that interesting, but that one got another 200,000 views, right? But... But it's because it, it was stuff I already knew, right? But the reason I knew it is because I've had to bury people, right? So you've gone through it, you know what's involved. Well, someone that's never had to do that, to them, that's like a, what? Like, that's what happens? Well, yeah. Yeah, when, when you go and get cremated, the first thing they do is offer you a plastic box, right? It was called a vinyl case, which I now know. But the reason it's a vinyl case is because it's built specifically to be sturdy so that if you drop the cremains, it doesn't break, right? And I was like, oh, that makes perfect sense now, right? But at the time when you have to do this for the first time and they go, this is what comes with the cremation. You're like, what? It, right? It, it looks cheap, and, but it's built for a different purpose. It's not meant to look fancy. It's meant to be sturdy. Crap, no one tells you, right? Um, so once again, it's don't underestimate the content that you make as far as you thinking or knowing what your user or the user base wants to hear, right? Cause it's never what you think. It's always the stuff you don't think, right? And, and we have a tendency of getting too far ahead of ourselves in the videos and the content we're putting out there. So we get into these like deep thoughts of like, we do marketing, right? So are there a ton of complex marketing things that I could explain to people? Absolutely. Do you know what of our videos perform the best? When you're a local business, you should set up my Google My Business. 30,000 views, right? I explain how a marketing automation and a sales funnel works, 400, <laughs> right? Is the funnel a far better sales and marketing tool than the Google My Business by itself? Yes. But most of the people watching this just aren't on that level yet, right? They're searching for basic information. They want basic things. They want to get to know you. And everyone in this room is in a nonprofit, right? What do you build your entire business on? Relationships? So do you think people want to hear commercials about your nonprofit or do they want to actually get to know what you do on a daily basis? Do they want to know if you had a bad day or do they just want to know you had good days? Do they want to know about that really difficult situation you really just dealt with or do they just want to hear about the happy endings? Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. That line, that thing. We're all kind of emotion. Yes. 
our vision. You went live on the one stop, not go live on that. Mm -hmm. But I went to God and blessed you. That's it's my heart. Yeah. So much. Stop. Yep. Nope. Right, right, right on Broad Street in Lansdale. Right, and you still remember that one, right? Huh? Yeah. So what happened was, for those of you that haven't seen it, is I was coming down Broad Street and there was this old lady chasing a puppy and there was no way she was catching it. So I stopped, pulled over, got out of my car, and then the dog runs into the street and a car came and hit it. And I'm throwing this old lady into my car and this bleeding dog. And I'm like, where is there an animal hospital? Well, there's one like a couple of hundred feet up the street. So like I pull into the parking lot. I look like a secret service agent with my car like wing and I drive a Suburban, right? So it's not like, like when I pulled up in front, like I see every, the receptionist, everybody's like staring in the window and I'm grabbing this dog and I'm, I'm pulling it inside. And I have this lady crying in my car and we get in there and the vet it was like barely breathing in the car and we get in the vets like sorry you know so now i have to take this poor dog wrap it in a blanket figure out what to do with it i had to talk to the lady like do you want to leave it here do you want to take it with you because she was not responding to the vet at all like she was in complete meltdown mode because it was it was her granddaughter's dog right so now I'm having to drive this poor lady back to her house right up on Broad Street and like sitting in my car looking at her going, well, what, what do I, what do I tell her? Right. But when that experience was done and I was like, the thing that I was the most upset about was that the person that hit the dog just slowed down and then kept going. Didn't even stop. Right. And I got even angrier when I was then cleaning all the blood from the dog off my car. Right? You should see all of your faces right now. <laughs> right? But that story connects, right? Because it's something that actually happened. It's real life. This is, this is the shit that happens in life, right? Does everything have to be a happy ending? No. Does everything have a happy ending? No. But people connect with both the good and the bad, right? So I just want to get back to, let's get back to the social media portion again. <laughs> now that I made everyone sad. <laughs> um, but so if you could advertise on CNN today, if I told you I'll give you a minute commercial on CNN, would you do it? Yeah. It happened last night. You were on CNN. Nice. <laughs> right. Do you know what CNN's average viewership is during prime time? It's about a, it's about 700, seven to 800,000 people. All right. So CNN has a viewership per day. Don't hold me to it, but I want to say it's like, um, the prime time is by far the highest, right? But like they have, that's their highest viewership. So they have, call it, I don't know, 10 million view hours a day. Instagram alone has 17.8 view hours a day. A day. 17 million hours a day. And you have an opportunity to be on a, all of these platforms with that type of viewership. But if I told you, you get to do a 30 second on CNN, you guys would jump on that, right? Does CNN have a different impact than social media? Yes. Does it have a different reach? Does it get a specific audience? Is it absolutely valuable? Yes. But you would get a one or two time shot at that. You could do this multiple times a day if you wanted to. And one of the things that takes you from being good at it to being efficient at it, because there's a difference between the two. Like you can make really good videos when they're pre-planned and you sit down and 
you scripted it and it takes all this time, right? The other thing you can do is what I'm doing now is documentation. How many conversations do you have a day where you go, man, if I could have caught that on video, that would have been awesome, right? Well, it's not expensive to do this anymore, right? And especially on applications or platforms like TikTok, they don't want things to be perfect, right? They want them to be real. They want them to be authentic. So you could do this stuff pretty much all day if you wanted to. If you know you're giving a presentation somewhere, bring a phone and a microphone and record it, right? Then literally drop the entire thing on YouTube, chop it up into bits, and now you have content for other platforms as well. Now you have blogs. Now, you have, now you've turned a 30-minute presentation into content for a month and a half. <clears throat> right? And it's a matter of getting into the habit of doing it. So like we schedule time every week. I have two hours, two days a week where I schedule all my content. Right? I also have, I also record it in between because sometimes you're like, oh, I got to get this down. So my advice would be make your recording setup as easy as possible. So at my office, I actually have a camera and a ring light that is set up all the time, 100% of the time. All I got to do is turn on the camera, turn on the ring light, sit down in front of it, and I can start talking, right? Does that mean I then have to take that video now and finish the production of it and get it out? No, but if I don't record it then, how many times do you then get interrupted with something? And then that idea you had, you're like a month later, like, oh, didn't I think of this a month ago? Right? So start creating a system around your videos where you do this on a regular basis. How much content do you want to put out? <laughs> okay. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna put it like our resource are Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, what part of the amount of hours per week that people power would it take to do it? I just don't think about it it so it all depends on the amount of videos you want to put out, right? So we went from putting out, call it three to four blogs a month to last month, we put out 217 pieces of video content. And that's a lot. But that's between the podcast and our Red Night videos, right? So we do a minimum of three per day for TikTok on the Red Night side. And our podcast lately has been that content plus four clips a day between, so that are outtakes from the podcast. Because we just, we kind of fell behind the first month. So we had 18 podcasts and we get 15 to 20 clips out of each podcast. So all of a sudden we had 240 clips worth and we're like, well, we got to get this stuff out. It's not going to do anything just sitting on a folder on a computer. So we just went and scheduled it all out. Um, some, some of it. So, so I do all the rough editing, right? So I like this recording, I will go back, I will watch it and I will cut, I will do the rough cuts, meaning the stuff that I want to cut out, I cut out and things that I want to take, um, and say, okay, let's turn this into a video. I will take those sections and then someone else will finalize the editing of most of it. Um, so the time it takes me with software like Descript, it's literally like working in a Word document, right? Because when you put the video in, it transcribes it. And then when you copy the text and you paste it into a new document, it literally pastes the video with it. So it's literally like working in a Word document. So it used to take me a lot longer when I had to watch the video and then cut it and then 
open a new project and like it was really complicated. Descript is specifically made for this type of content. It is not fantastic for a lot of other editing, but for this type of stuff, it's hard to beat. All right. Uh, 19 bucks a month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, 19, 20, like whatever it is. It's, it's, it's under $30, I think, for a basic account. Um, but just the amount of t time that it saved us from having to use something like Adobe to using that, we were like, oh my God, this just, this just saved us like eight hours a month. All right? Have a question? Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So uh, Adobe Rush is always fantastic, but it comes at a price. The entire Adobe line, there is, when it comes to any editing, photos, videos, there is nothing that beats Adobe, right? And as far as quality, things you can do, all that stuff, but it's not for everyone. Um, TikTok actually owns a editing app called CapCut. That's an online editing tool only, or it functions on mobile devices. So it's designed specifically for mobile devices. Um, and that's pretty much the ones we use. We always test a couple of here and there. Um, I heard Canva is adding another video editing tool. <laughs> the dar Canva, the darling of nonprofits, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I, we haven't used it. Like we don't use Canva because we have all the Adobe products. Um, but from what I know about Canva, it is going to be good enough, right? Because Canva is not looking for perfect. They're looking for good enough. Same thing with the CapCut editor. Like you can do a ton of stuff in it. It's the same editor that's built into TikTok. So they literally just took that and made that a separate app. And you had a second question. Mm -hmm. Um, I mm-hmm. Correct. Right. <laughs> so we don't actually, so I started testing TikTok, for example, on a personal account. Because people had told me, you know, this is so hard, blah, blah, blah. And I got 2,000 followers in my first 30 days. And I was like, well, this isn't hard. And I think I used one song that was trending or being used, right? The rest of it was just content. I had one song, actually, never mind. I had one song that I used for some certain types of videos, but it was a song that nobody cared about. Like, it probably ranks number 28,000 on, on the trending list. <laughs> On the business side, what we found with um, a lot of the stuff that we do is they, they, they don't help you go viral as much as you think, right? Because you have to remember the reason you use subtitles and you should never put out a video without subtitles is because it's like a staggering amount of people that watch videos with the sound off, right? So we tested this as well. Every once in a while, we'll put out a video, no subtitles. And it performs at 50% of what even our worst subtitled video will do. All right? It's, um, so on the business side of things, it has to be, your content has to be good enough to stand without. So like a picture, stuff like that, don't really function that well on the business side of things. And it, I think, and I can't say this for sure, um, I think TikTok also prioritizes business accounts differently based on the content they have on it, right? So like when we do certain educational content that far outperforms anything else we put out there, but it's basic educational content. It's basic things. The moment we get into anything um, that is remotely complex or something that not everybody can, I mean, the videos that perform by far the best from, for us are our company culture videos, right? Th those perform at those, the three videos, I have three videos that all have 
a million plus views. They all talk about something related to our company culture, not what we actually do. It's the why we do it, not the how we do it. So I don't know if I really answered your question, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, there is no magic bullet when it comes to that. So there are certain business sounds that definitely trend more than others, but they are trending with a different audience, right? So that's, and you and I both know, and I hope all of you already know this, but you have to know your audience. It's not like when you talk about content, it's like, well, what about the ages? Racial demographics, economic demographics. Mm -hmm. What what should so so first of all, that is partially platform dependent. So, for example, Facebook has an average higher user base than Instagram. Um, TikTok was always considered the young person app, and now like fifty one or fifty two percent of users are forty plus. Um. One of the guys that we do work for that has done the most business of TikTok of any of my clients does Medicare, Medicaid. <laughs> so um, if you think it's only for a younger demographic, you might want to rethink that. But a lot of times the algorithms will figure out who wants to watch your content. So you are not sitting down and figuring out, oh, I am making this for this demographic where I'm making this for uh, primarily women. Well, guess what? Your video may end up appealing more to men ages 25 to 27, and that's who they will feed your video to, right? So yes, your tagging and all that stuff can affect it, but ultimately they will serve your videos, especially on TikTok. They will serve it to the audience that's most likely to interact with it. So you don't control that as much as they control that because it's based on interest, not based on what you want. So if you watch the broadest demographic, putting, putting your content out there on various platforms. Correct. Yes. And that is, should always be your goal. Is That's why I said, take a piece of content, chop it up, right? You could also take, you're reading through your transcript and you go, oh my God, this one line is fantastic. Turn it into a graphic, drop it on Instagram. Right? Turn it into a quote. Put your slap your name on the bottom of it. And it looks more important that way. Right? <laughs> there used to be a science behind when to post. Yeah, it's all crap. It's it's all crap. It's all crap. So um yeah. <laughs> so because once again it will feed through its algorithm. So uh, Instagram, would, would you ideally like to post when your audience is watching? Yes. But now that they're going to interest-based, there's nothing that says your video is going to get served now. So a lot of times we'll post a video today. It'll get 200 views today. And then tomorrow at some random time, it'll get another 20,000 views. And there's no rhyme or reason. We could have posted it at four o'clock and by... 10 o'clock in the morning, the following day, all of a sudden it takes off. Same thing. We've had videos. We posted them early in the morning thinking, oh, we'll get the business people in the morning, right? Oh, no. That takes off on a Saturday at like 11, right? So there is no optimal time per se to say, oh, these videos. And I was watching another creator um, and they tested this. So they will publish content and they will literally go in in the morning and post all their videos at the same time. And they said there's no measurable performance difference between when they do it that way and when they try to schedule them out through the day. The one thing I can tell you that we've noticed, which the only thing I would argue against that, is that if you post consistently throughout the day, it's not necessarily just the videos you're putting out that are getting viewed. But when you put a new piece of content out, it seems like some of your most popular content gets pushed out again alongside of it. So that is the benefit to spreading it out, as far as I can tell. But once again, that could work today and not tomorrow. Because they change this stuff all the time. In fact, this entire thing could be obsolete by this afternoon. Right? Like, 
that's what happened with Instagram. Like they, they dropped an update and then literally, I think it was like 12 days later, they backed the update out. So everything you learned in 12 days and you're like, this is fantastic. And then you're like, uh, none of this works now. So yes, you kind of have to be aware of what's going on, but this is where measuring your results is so important. How about the value mail? It's not the best. LinkedIn creator mode? Yeah. Is anyone using LinkedIn creator mode? Does anybody here know what LinkedIn creator mode is? No. Okay. So let's get into the LinkedIn portion of it. So LinkedIn is by far the most underutilized platform there is for general marketing and outreach because it was always a sales community. It was a business community, right? The reality is if you are going after people that are more affluent, LinkedIn is the place where most of those people spend the vast majority of their time when it comes to a social network, if you want to call LinkedIn that. So LinkedIn at some point had the epiphany that um, the only ones buying and utilizing their services um, were bankers and salespeople with larger organizations that were buying it so that they could track down people like me and start cold messaging us at random times during the day to the point where that I turned off my messaging on LinkedIn, right? And talk to any small business owner out there, which is often the target that they want us on there because if we're on there, they can sell their product to the bankers, the, the insurance companies and all that stuff. So they are making an effort to get smaller businesses and creators back on the platform. And by doing that, they had to do two things. They have to get creators involved, same people that are creating stuff for TikTok and because TikTok has a huge business community, whether people realize it or not. Like TikTok has become a search engine. I'll, Remind me to get back to that. Um, but LinkedIn is slowly realizing we need users back on the platform. If we don't have the users here, we don't have a product to sell other than job applications and contact information, right? So they enabled what's called creator mode. So anybody that makes content, if you start doing it consistently, they will actually start prioritizing some of the content you're putting out. But once again, it's a consistency game. If you do one every 15 days, just because it's really not going to do much, but they are, they're making an attempt to get those creators back on board because once you get those creators and there's actual content there that startups want and small businesses want, then they can get them back as well. But it's a chicken and egg game, right? You need to get the creators there first. Because without that content, you don't get that other group of people to come to consume it. So they are making an effort, effort being the key term. And their algorithm works differently than all the other ones. So they have key metrics that you are aware of and they have metrics you aren't aware of. And they don't publish those metrics. Like, you know, how when someone just puts like, three words in the top and then you see the little see more when you click that see more that's actually what they call a hidden metric that metric counts right it's not a prime metric but it's a secondary metric so you want them to so like if if whatever you're writing on linkedin fits in the box make it one word per line and have it go down the screen <laughs> right or add another line to do whatever you need to do to get that see more button to show up so that people click it. And LinkedIn is also trying to encourage two-way, being a two-way platform. So they want you to engage with other people on the platform, even if you are a content creator, All right? So you will have to spend some time on the platform commenting on other people's things. Like you have to treat it like a networking event, just a really big, massive one. You can put whatever. You, so go back to your LinkedIn and look at the engagement rate of the content that's out there now. Video content has by far the highest engagement rate. Pictures have the second, articles have the third, and written posts have the lowest. So the question would become, which one should you do? 
And it also depends on what you're putting out there. Hey, we're opening late because of the snow today. No, you don't need to make that a video, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, if you're running a series to promote an event, it should absolutely be a mixed content strategy. So you should have video, you should have graphics, you should have written. You should have blog posts, you should have articles. Like you should mix that up whenever possible. But I will guarantee you in another year, almost all the content you see on all these platforms is going to be 80 to 90% video content. Right? Because how long does it take you to look at a picture? Three seconds? Five seconds, seven seconds on a video is twice double the, the time you now spent on the platform. All right? So even if you just watch six seconds of a video, that's still a hell of a lot longer than what you were doing before. And that's what they're all fighting for is they want your time. You are the product. Right? Your time is the product. That's what they're selling. So the longer they can get you to spend there, the more money they can make. Oh, yes. Thank you. So do people know uh, what Baidu is? The Chinese search engine? So it's the equivalent to Google of China. So they saw, I believe it was a 43% drop in searches in the first six months of this year. At the same time, TikTok saw a similar increase. So people are no longer going to Google to find the answer to a question. They are now going to TikTok to find the answer to a question. And we are seeing that same trend happening here. Like I was, I, I was talking to a group the other day and there was a basketball coach in the room. And she goes, yeah, I stopped going to YouTube or any of these Google. She's like, if I need exercises for my girls, I go to TikTok and search, you know, basketball drills. And then she just flips through them. She's like, it takes half the time of going to Google and then clicking a result and then seeing the video being, she's like, I know when I go on TikTok and I do the search, I will get a video of the drill immediately. Restaurants are going to start seeing the same thing, right? People are now going to TikTok you to see actual reviews and reactions. <laughs> so here's what I want you to think about. Knowing that this is what's happening, do you think it might be a good time to get on places like TikTok? Right? If someone is looking for, and now this is where traditional SEO mindset starts playing into your videos, right? Now you have to start thinking of keywords. Now you have to start thinking about the title of your video. Now you have to start like, there's all these things that come into play and TikTok is fully aware this is happening because they went from allowing, I think 140 characters for the description to like 1800. So they are fully aware of what's going on. Like they know they are becoming a search engine and they are capitalizing big time. So the sooner you get on this, the better your results is going to be. Like if you open TikTok now and you type in crap no one tells you in the search bar, guess who owns that keyword? We own it. Like I think there's one or two videos that aren't us. Every other video for crap no one tells you is one of our videos from the podcast. Is it a commonly searched term? No. But if you replace the word crap with a different word, <laughs> right? And have you ever typed something into Google, but it gives you a result for a different word because they know those two words are interchangeable? It's like magic. Right? So help reassure us. <laughs> in the middle of years, which in what the room is advised of social on young Yeah. That's the first thing to come in and do that. 
Yeah. Anybody in this room, I don't care who you are, I could show you in 20 minutes how to record, edit, and post a video. Will it be perfect? Will it have, will it have, will it have like fancy thing popping up? No. Will it be good enough? Yes. Right? So I always tell people, whatever content you have available today to put out is better than whatever content you have tomorrow. Because if you don't have, even if it's not ready, well, when is it ready? If you have nothing to go out today, no, this is ready. No, no, no. <laughs> like, yeah, but like, I have toilet paper hanging out the back of my pants. I don't care. <laughs> like, it's, if, if that's what, like, if that's what you have ready today, then that is what goes out today. Right? Because otherwise you keep kicking the can down the road. But if you know, I have to get something out today. Well, today you're going to make damn sure that you have whatever ready today that you have for tomorrow. But then here's the thing. Now it's ready today. Why wait till tomorrow? Right? Until you have built up a library where you can schedule this stuff out. It's going to take more of the, okay, if it's ready, just put it out. I don't care what time of day it is. I don't care how well edited it is. As long as it's good enough, get it out. Especially on TikTok. Instagram, you have to be a little bit more thoughtful of, but you don't have to post as frequently on there either. Uh, <laughs> so we actually don't really use them. Um, so we found out that Instagram punishes your reach for using a scheduling platform. TikTok for business has one built in and no scheduling platform will actually do the entire scheduling on TikTok for you, except TikTok. Uh, YouTube is one of the easiest one to do it with. So what we did is we developed a system for um, how we name files that actually make the process. Yes, does it take a little bit longer than uploading it into one that then schedules it out? Yes but I would not trade that for the reach we get by uploading organically to each platform. The only one we cheat on that we actually use a software called Repurpose that pulls our TikTok videos and drops it on Pinterest because I'm not a big Pinterest user, which we are working on, but I'm not a Pinterest demographic either. No, 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 no. No, no, no. TikTok for business has a full, I can go in, add everything, tell it what day, what time, all that stuff. I want it scheduled out. So it'll allow you to do 10 days in advance. So we always have a full week. We always have 21 videos scheduled, right? I haven't seen it on the personal profiles, but we only use business profiles because there's that. Because that's another thing that people are debating. Like, oh, personal profiles perform better. Not really. Like the fact that I have two business profiles we're building right now. One hit 25,000 in 90 days and the other one um, is 1,330 days. Like we're getting, I'm get, not getting any different results from the business profiles than what I see people say they're getting from their personal ones. Yes. Like on LinkedIn, like we have a bit. So, you know, I tag our spots. Let's do it. Okay. Does that help the reach of the pro? Like it can. It's not a yes. So none of this is definitive information, right? This is all speculative, best research, best information, because no, they don't come out and tell you this. Right? Um can it help with visibility? Yes. Will it help with interaction, comments? Probably not. Right? If it's, if you're tagging someone, like if I took this and I dropped it on LinkedIn, I would tag all of you. How many of you would actually care? A couple of you might go in and go, oh, great job today. Tell us some more crap, right? <laughs> Um, but other than that, none of you would probably even react to it, 
right? So would it serve a purpose? Because what would ultimately be my purpose for putting this out? Not to reach you guys. I've already reached you guys. You just gave me 45 minutes of your time, right? I want the people that I haven't talked to yet. So. You haven't told me about Twitter at all. Use that. <laughs> so for us, Twitter is a complete follow behind. So the beauty of Twitter is um, it is an extremely forgiving platform and brutally honest. Any platform where people can comment anonymously. So if you have a thought, put it on Twitter and you'll get instant feedback. Right? Like, well, that's stupid. Well, that's brilliant. You know? Oh, tell me. Like, whatever it is. Twitter gives you instant feedback and it gives it brutally. Right? And I used to be called all kinds of names for being that brutally honest. And now it's like, oh, wow, look, I can get brutally honest feedback from anonymous people. <laughs> um, so Twitter, yes, it is one of the platforms you should include. We don't utilize it nearly enough. Um, it kind of goes into... Oh, to answer your question. So we do use a software called Hero Post for all of our static content. We do not use it for our video content. So like that's where we put stuff to Google My Business. We put it to Twitter. We put pictures on Instagram. Like any static content, we use Hero Post. But for all video content, we post it to that platform natively. So yes, we do put in the occasional thing out on Twitter. Um, I don't even think I have Twitter installed anymore. I uninstalled it. Um, I mean, it's just a personal preference. Does it work? Yes. Anything you will put time, effort, and consistency into will have a return. That includes Twitter. I have another question. Let's go for it. <laughs> uh, outcomes spoke about that or share. No, views are almost irrelevant. You want to look at common shares and saves. Those three things will by default drive views as well, right? But views don't, I always say views don't generate dollars, right? Very rarely do they. And even, even if you get a ton of views, can you get business from it? Yes, but it's very rare. Because one of the things we found is that, yes, the video, the video section will drive interest. The questions, comments, and things from users in the comments is what actually drives the dollars. Right? So the video is what triggers the initial interest. And then the comment section is what drives a lot of people over the edge to actually reach out to you. That's why we always say it's a community. Answer them. If someone comments, answer. If someone, like... Make it an interaction because a lot of times you're closing the deal in the comment section. You're not closing it in the video. All right. So I'll give you a perfect example because everybody in this room wants more money donated to them. Right. But you cannot get up and say a video that is give me more money. Right. Because everybody would scroll past that. But if you made a video about something specific and someone comments, how can I help? How can they help? <laughs> right? Here's where you can donate. Here's where you can go to volunteer. Here's... So you've triggered the interest with the video and you're now actually asking for the thing you truly want in the comment section and it doesn't look obnoxious, right? It's a legitimate response to a legitimate question. And Kim is telling me I'm out of time. <laughs> so, yeah, that, I'm done. I can be done. Any last questions? Is it Yes. Maybe. Maybe. So now I got to take it. I got to go look at it and see whether or not the audio quality is good enough to see whether it functions whether it's actually good enough to be released. Because I'm at a point now where I have so much content that I can pick and choose what I put out. There is the last chamber one I did is actually on YouTube, which is similar to this. 
you know, they were never a hundred percent the same, but same core basic concept. Oh, you put it on your Facebook. Okay. There you go. Another. <laughs> so the sole video content is the video content about making more video content. Okay. <laughs> that, that works. So, well, thank you guys. That's not work. That's not work.